Welcome everyone, I'm Laura Shu. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the new Lightroom CC application that Adobe introduced in October of 2017. At the same time, it renamed the old Lightroom program that we've been using for 10 years, Lightroom Classic. And that program is also still available. Now Lightroom CC is a cloud-based photography solution. It's cloud-centric and it consists of much more than just the desktop application. We do have the desktop application, which notice that I have on both my desktop computer and my laptop, and it also consists of Lightroom Mobile for the iPad and iPhone and Android devices, and Lightroom Web that you can access from any web browser. You can import or add photos into Lightroom CC from any one of these access points. Lightroom will automatically upload the full-size files to the cloud and then down to all of the other access points. So you can have all of your photos with you everywhere you go and you can work on them on all of these devices and that work will sync up to the cloud and then down again to the rest of the devices. So Lightroom CC on the desktop is fully integrated with Lightroom Mobile and Web. Everything you do in one syncs to the other. This is very different from Lightroom Classic, which is a desktop-centric solution where your files reside on your desktop computer and there's limited syncing to Lightroom Mobile and Web and the integration is not complete. Lightroom Classic, for example, only sends small compressed versions of your files called Smart Previews to the cloud, not the originals. Now Adobe has announced that Lightroom Classic's sync functionality has been frozen. No more features will be added, and as Lightroom CC gets new sync features, they won't be made compatible with Lightroom Classic. As an example, we just got the ability to add keywords to our photos while working on our mobile devices. These will sync to Lightroom CC, but they will never sync to Lightroom Classic. Going forward, Lightroom Classic is considered a desktop solution rather than a cloud-based solution. So Lightroom CC is the fully integrated cloud-based solution. Let's take a look at the desktop application. It not only has a modern interface, but it's very streamlined. As a version 1.0 application, it's pretty light on features, but I imagine that this is going to change fairly quickly. This is designed to be much simpler to use. To add photos, you'll click on the plus, navigate to the folder or memory card that you want to import, click on review for import, and then uncheck any that you don't want to import at this point. You can also add the photos to an album while you're importing. I'll get to albums in a moment. So I'll click on add 17 photos. Notice that it has many fewer options in here than you would see in Lightroom Classic. Now you may have noticed in the import dialog, there was no option to decide where you're going to store the files. Lightroom CC is designed to be much simpler to use than Lightroom Classic in terms of file and folder management and catalogs. Lightroom CC will take care of all of that for you. There is no folders panel here for rearranging and renaming your folders and moving files from one folder to another. You simply import your photos and then move on to rating, flagging, and keywording them and editing them. The one choice you can make is that in addition to storing them in the cloud, you can go into Preferences, Lightroom on the Mac, Edit on the PC, and on the Local Storage tab, Choose to have a copy of the photos stored locally on your computer instead of just in the cloud. But that's the extent of the decision making on your part. Even if you don't choose to store the files locally, Lightroom CC will keep some of them locally if you've recently imported or worked on them, and it will also keep what are called smart previews locally on your hard drive so that you can work with your photos when you don't have an internet connection and so that the program will be more responsive. In addition to these shortcuts that allow you to get to all of your photos, recent ones, or to drill down into specific dates, you'll access your photos by setting up albums. Albums are just like collections in Lightroom Classic. 
To keep them organized, you can set up folders of albums. Now these are not folders in the sense of folders on your hard drive. They're just sets to put albums in. So here I would have an individual album that I haven't put any photos in yet, stored within a clients folder, stored within a people folder. Down here, I just have an album sitting out by itself. It's not in a folder. When you don't need to see this photos panel, you can click on the box to collapse it or use the shortcut P. So we've imported photos, set up albums. Other things you can do in Lightroom CC are to assign pick and reject flags, one through five stars, add keywords to photos, and edit the photos. Let's take a look at the different views here. We're in grid view. There's actually two different grids. There's the photo grid, which we're seeing, no space in between thumbnails, and no information about the photos. And then there's a second grid called square grid. And you can use the shortcut G to toggle between them. This gives us a little bit of information about the photos. I can see my pick and reject flags. So I've picked this photo. I can see stars. The tag indicates that this photo has keywords. And then the check mark means that this photo has completed syncing to the cloud. If I come to this photo and I give it three stars, the blue circle means that information is being uploaded to the cloud. I'll double click on this photo to go to detail view or D for detail. This is a better view, of course, for rating and flagging your photos. You've got zoom buttons down here. This icon will collapse and expand the film strip. And then this last one will show you before and after on editing work. And I haven't edited this photo. Next, I can view information about the photo with the I icon or by typing the letter I. I can type in some information and then I can view other information, including whether it is synced to the cloud and whether it's stored locally. Finally, I can edit the photos. These buttons here are for different editing functions. Now we have most of the tools that Lightroom Classic has. As of October of 2017, we're missing split toning, the tone curve, and camera profiles and other camera calibration settings. But the rest of them are here. Some of them are arranged differently. For example, clarity is down in effects. White balance is in the color section. So that newer users aren't overwhelmed, some of the tools are presented in a simplified way. For example, we have one sharpening slider here. If we click on the sideways triangle, though, we then see three more sliders for advanced users. If you're exploring this application, do click on all the sideways triangles to see what's revealed. We've got the crop tool, the spot removal tool and healing brush, the adjustment brush, graduated filter, renamed the linear gradient, and the radial filter. Now, in this video, I'm not going to list everything you can do in Lightroom Classic that you can't do in Lightroom CC, but in the blog post where this video is posted, I'll have a link to a separate article where I try to keep up with that list. Right now, you can edit single photos, and you can copy all of the work from one photo to another, but you can't, for example, copy a subset of the settings or copy your work from one photo to many others and you can't work on many together at once. All right, let's go back to grid view and I'll show you the filtering and search function. I'll search my entire catalog, all of my photo. We can use the search box. We also have filtering with the funnel. Let's take a look at that first. This allows us to filter on stars, flags, photo versus video, keywords that we've assigned, cameras, and locations. So I can see, for example, all of my photos that I've assigned two or more stars. I'll click back on the second star to undo that. Now these are very much rule based. You'll get exactly what you expect that you would get. That's not always the case with search. Let's search for all of my photos with dogs in them. Now, not only will it return photos that have a keyword of dogs, but it will also analyze the content of my images to see if there are dogs in them. Now, unlike filtering, search will return some false positives and false negatives. 
these two are not photos of dogs, so it's mistaken. I also have more photos of dogs than it's returning here, so there are false negatives as well, but it still can be really handy for finding subjects in your catalog. Let's type green here. Let's see how many photos we get that have green in them. By the way, search will not work if you don't have an internet connection and if your photos have not finished syncing to the cloud. This analyzing of your images is being done on Adobe servers, not on your computer. So most of these photos have green in them, but again, there are some false positives. The last thing I want to show you is how you can share your photos at this point. I'll select a photo, click on the share button up here, so we can save a copy to our computer or we can send to Facebook. Now don't get confused here with the word save. All of the work you do in Lightroom CC is automatically saved. You never have to do a file save to save your work. Save to is used when you want to send a copy of your photo with the editing applied out to the outside world. So let's take a look at it. We can save JPEG copies. We can specify where on our computer they should go and then how big they should be. Small, full size, or we can specify a specific size based on the longest edge of the photo. We don't have a quality setting. Quality is fixed at 80 and we can't choose color space. Now this is fine for a lot of purposes, but we will need more functionality in here. The other option is original plus settings. So if my original is a Nikon RAW file, it will save a Nikon RAW file plus what's called an XMP file that has all of the work I've done on the photo. If the original was a DNG file, we get a DNG file with the settings inside of it. So there's no option here to create DNG files from Nikon files or to export TIFFs or PSDs, but that's what we have in terms of output at this point. There's also no printing or bookmaking or designing of slideshows or web galleries. You can, however, send your friends or clients links to collections of your photos that they can browse on the web, comment on and like, and play slideshows of. I'm not sure why Share Album is grayed out here, but that's what it would be for, is to get that link. So that's pretty much it as far as the functionality currently in Lightroom CC. Whether it's for you will depend first on your access to internet. If you don't have an internet connection, you can use the program, but you can't use the search function, and you can't use reverse geocoding. Let me go to a photo from my phone. I don't have any, but if I had photos that had GPS latitude and longitude on them, you'd see that this information, city, state, and country, are automatically populated. That won't work without an internet connection. So search and reverse geocoding. Also, obviously, if you don't have an internet connection, your photos won't be backed up to the cloud, and they won't make it to Lightroom Mobile and Web. Whether your internet usage is metered should be another consideration. Lightroom CC will upload and download full-size files, so you'll have to be careful that you don't exceed what your internet plan allows. Remember, Lightroom Classic just uploads smart previews, which are much smaller, and it's not uploading your entire photo library. Also, whether Lightroom CC is for you at this point depends on whether you need features that Lightroom Classic has that Lightroom CC doesn't. In the blog post where I've posted this video, you'll find a link to a complete list of features that Lightroom Classic has that Lightroom CC doesn't. So you can see what's important to you and whether it makes sense to switch or not. You'll also find a video on my blog that talks about how to migrate from Lightroom Classic to Lightroom CC and how to best prepare for that process and also discusses the idea of working with both programs simultaneously, which for the most part I don't recommend. All right, this concludes the introduction to Lightroom CC. I'm really looking forward to watching this develop. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel to show your support and to hear about new video tutorials. While you're at it, subscribe to my newsletter to get a free training video download and more. I'm Laura Shue.